Miss Lemon, get Professor Kelp in here immediately. And in another room, you come across something completely different. A picture of a chair, a chair, and a blown up dictionary definition of a chair. Oh, 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 I got the weight of the books on me. Oh God, the books are so heavy. Hello, this is Wazo X Wazo, Evil O. So, today I'm talking about books. Oh, look, it's a Kochi Biennale catalog. Talking about books, and I'm talking about academia, and I'm talking about its relation to artists. There seems to be a very strange now expectation that artists are somehow need to be intellectuals or appeal to intellectuals through their writings and through their speech. And this was not always the case. I'm not quite sure why this has started. Artists in the past were primarily thought of as craftsmen, as we've gone over before. And then of course the craftsmen, the craftspersons, you know, evolved to be thought of as more than that, to be thought of as sort of seers, spiritual beings who had a finger on the zeitgeist of their times, um, who had a finger on the poetics of their environment and things that they could express about their current times, their own lives, how they interrelated with the world around them in their current time, and present that in a way that was very, I'm going to use the word beautiful, was very beautiful, but also was very meaningful and poetic in some way to the viewer. And what seems to have happened over the past several decades, because we all talk about art, you know, and art for non-artists becomes not just a viewing experience, it also becomes an experience that you want to intellectually pry into it and try to think, okay, what is he saying in this particular work of art? What is she trying to uh, convey? Um, how does this particular art fit a larger narrative? How does this particular work of art um, react to the current zeitgeist of the times, the politics, the cultural issues of the times? How do you fit it in to that slot in history. And this is especially something that's taken up by academics and art historians. Of course, that's their job. Can't fault them, that is exactly their job. But I think what has happened is artists started to play up to the academics a number of decades ago. And artists started realizing, if I'm going to end up being in a book, which of course is very important artists to be written about in an anthology. To be written about an anthology in a serious way, uh, fitting you in to a larger narrative of art, that's very important to most artists. Uh, it, it helps people take you seriously. But what has happened is so many artists now, they, they intentionally seem to craft their art in a manner that is going to appeal to the academics rather than to appeal to the average person. And I feel that's a big strain off the path because ideally the academics are looking at the artist who is not 
self-consciously trying to appeal to the academics, but is trying to appeal to his times or just expressing his own heart, his own vision and how he's reacting to his environment. Um, and the artist should not be thinking about how his work, his or her work, fits into some academic art history narrative. Now, of course, sometimes there might be some referencing to art history or even some intentional, you know, criticizing of art history in one's work. But I think we've seen a point where you end up, you know, when you look at the highly conceptual work that is out there, work that is um, very textual in nature many times. I mean, I've gone to exhibitions and you see these sometimes at the Biennales where exhibitions are basically vitrines, glass cases full of documents to read. Um, to me, that begs the notion, you know, is it really art when it becomes nothing but documentation? Um, artists that, you know, are really gearing their entire creative process to fit a conceptual academic narrative rather than to create something which is visually accessible. The emphasis is on visual and accessible and that visually accessible to everyone to read and understand through their eyes, not through a text. I think you can look at somebody like Andrew Dodia thinks of herself first and foremost as a painter. Doesn't mean she can't articulate her work because she can, of course. Um, it has nothing to do with articulation of what you're doing. A good artist should be able to articulate what they're doing, but there's a difference between doing that and intentionally playing up to an academic field. Um, it, gives, it gives the academic community way too much power over the art community and what the art community wishes to produce and what the art community wishes to pursue individually. As I recall, upon your arrival here, I told you, along with the other new members of the faculty, that I will not stand for any member of my staff utilizing the facilities of this university for his or her own personal experiments. Did I not make myself perfectly clear? Good, I knew my memory served me well. Please like, subscribe, like and subscribe, like and subscribe, share. Thank you and talk to you next time. Bye. This is Wazwat Swazwo from Bangkok.